Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Now, this is the last podcast before Christmas for those of us who celebrate Christmas. And I want to begin by thanking our audience and everyone who's tuned in this year for your support. We're, we're growing at a great pace. And, uh, and it means a lot uh, because it allows us to have great guests on. So thank you for your support and for tuning in. And the podcast today, I had the chance to interview Marcus Ogden. And Marcus played for four NFL teams. Uh, for five years before he was cut. And the theme of this is really resilience. And when you think about the environment we're in right now, the economic environment, you know, it's tough. It's tough for sales leaders. It's tough for sales reps. It's tough for buyers. And so how can we adopt a resilient mindset, knowing that things are stacked against us, that sales cycles are longer, it's getting harder to make a decision, but yet quotas aren't changing. And so how do we avoid initially starting with that negative default of a defeatist attitude? How can we look inward and and get resilient and say, okay, you know, I'm going to recognize that I may fail at part of these, some of these things. That's inevitable. That's part of it. So how can we normalize failure so that when it does happen, we're not surprised and we're almost expecting, we're going to be little setbacks. I'm not saying failure where the world falls down, but there's going to be little setbacks. And sometimes those setbacks are actually a blessing in disguise. So we talk about resilience and from his standpoint, you know, after he left the NFL, you know, he turned to alcohol and drugs and, and he had a, you know, a eight figure construction business and he unfortunately ran it into the ground. But the lesson here is the rebuilding and how did he dig deep? How did he adopt a resilient mindset to allow him to, you know, express the gratitude, surround himself with strong, positive people to know his worth, to create consistent habits, to have discipline, to look, to have positive energy and surround him with with others like that. And that allowed him to now, you know, host a a world-renowned podcast get authentic with Marcus Ogden, to have keynote speaking opportunities that he could only dream of, to be a best-selling author of two books. So it really shows you what's possible. And so, you know, my hope after listening to this is that you take some of his approach, you take his mindset, and we really look inward and see what's within our control. You know, how can I shift my mindset to get in front of some of these limiting beliefs? How can I really adopt self-care and look after myself, whether I'm a sales leader or an an individual contributor, so that I show up present for my team or I show up present and and willing to connect and engage with my prospects. Because these, this servant leadership and this type of authentic relationship is what's going to make the difference, especially in 2023 when we know, you know, 60% of deals end in no decision because people can't make a decision. Well, how can we empower them? How can we de-risk things? And a lot of that is how we show up how we can look after ourselves to create a safe space for them. So definitely encourage you to take a listen. Let us know uh, your thoughts. Let us know if you've implemented any of his suggestions and what outcomes um, you're able to achieve as a result of them. Um, So happy new year, everybody. Thank you for listening and we'll see you next time. So as sales reps and sales leaders, there's a lot of things stacked against us. We're coming up to the end of 2022 and what a year it's been. And I think this is the time of year when we really need to dig deep and get resilient and, and really, you know, understand what is it going to take for us to, to hit the ground running in 2023. And I'm delighted to bring Marcus Ogden onto the podcast, who is no stranger um, to setbacks, but he's here to tell us about how we can really um, get resilient and, and win the game of life and really in business. So, so Marcus, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me on, Karen. I appreciate it. I'm delighted to speak with you. As I mentioned, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people. I mean, it's 
We're supposed to have a joyful time of year coming up to the holidays, but it, it may not be joyful to, to, to some based on what's going on. But when you look at also the economic situation we're in, you know, budgets are tighter, decisions are tougher to get, uh, sales cycles are longer, yet quotas are still unchanged. So what I'm seeing is the first thing to go is usually that mindset piece and that defeatist attitude of how am I going to do this and really start questioning themselves. And so, you know, based on your experience in the NFL and then, you know, hitting rock bottom, what would you say? Why, why don't we start by, by maybe getting a bit of a backstory as to, you know, what did you take from the NFL or what did you learn that allowed you to become so resilient and rebuild yourself that perhaps some of our audience could take away? You know what I learned, Karen? I learned that in life, you're going to lose battles. In the NFL, I lost a lot of battles, one-on-one -on -one battles in practice. I remember one practice, I gave up like six sacks to a guy and I literally just kept getting frustrated and frustrated. And my coach told me, my head coach, me, Marcus, you had a really bad day. You have two choices. You can either come back tomorrow with your head down, complaining, feeling sorry for yourself, have a worse practice, and then probably get cut from this organization. Or come back tomorrow, have your head in the right frame of mind, have a strong mindset, learn from your mistakes, own them, fix them, move on and then make the team and continue to do better at your craft. And I remember that practice, like it was yesterday, and a guy, the guy actually beat me for the sacks were actually good friends. He's my old teammate, Aiken Ayadele. And in business, you're going to lose battles. You're not going to win every battle. You're not going to get every sale. You're not going to hit every quota. You're not going to get to every, you know, thing you want to achieve. Got it. But what has to stay constant is your mindset that you deserve to succeed in life, and that no matter what you have to endure, you have to be able to focus on the light and push ahead. Great quote by Aristotle, in times of extreme darkness, focus on the light. And I feel so many times in business, people focus on what they don't get. For example, I have a client who's been supposed to sponsor my podcast, right? And things were going on well. He's a client of mine. And, you know, we were supposed to sign him up last Friday, didn't happen, need to check with his wife, we're supposed to sign him up Monday, call, was in meetings, we're supposed to talk to him Tuesday, call, he was in meetings. And I said to myself, okay, I'm done. I'm not going to call him anymore. We'll talk on Friday. And he texted me this morning, oh man, I'm sorry for the stiff arm. You know, I had a bad meeting, you know, uh, you know, I need a little more time to revisit. I said, man, look, here's where we're at. You told me you were going to sponsor. Great. Are you sponsor and get maximum value for your brand and get out in front of the target audience you want to get out in front of, help raise the type of money you want to raise for your initiative, or you can do a smaller package instead of doing 14 months, you can do six months. Here's the price point or do zero, whatever you want to do. And I said, all I want to do is just know what you want to do and then put it in our rearview mirror. That's it. And move on. So many people, I think, would have, and this is to me, this is totally me several years ago when I was like, desperate and didn't have any money, right, Karen? I was like back against the wall. So if you're in that space, I get it. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. Again, when I moved to Raleigh, North Carolina, I had $400 to my name, didn't know a soul, home foreclosed on, both cars repossessed in the same day. So don't think I don't know what you're going through if you're going through that. But what I'm saying is today with my new mindset and my new disposition, if I don't get someone to work with me, that's okay, right? I keep moving. So the guy didn't sign up yesterday, the client, and then he called me a day. So I said, man, we'll talk Friday. It's let me know either way. I ended up closing a $10,000 speaking job yesterday with the organization that I'll be doing work for in January, right? If I had had the mindset where I can't, oh, I didn't get that guy to pay me a day. Oh, I didn't get that money. And, oh, I didn't get this. Oh, I, it's Christmas time, da, 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 right? You start what? Pulling away from your chi which is all about the ability to balance yourself and keep moving forward. So if you're listening, you're not going to win every battle. You're not going to get every sale. You're not going to hit every quota. You're not going to hit every you know, target. Got it. But that doesn't mean you stop giving the effort. It doesn't mean you stop trying to hit the target, to hit the milestone, to hit the achievements. And I feel if you got that in your mindset, then I think over time you'll see – the milestones, the targets start getting hit more because you're in a better frame of mind. 
Wow. We got to rewind three minutes so I can <laughs> pick some of those things apart. But that was, uh, I mean, so much, Im so much value there, Marcus. And, you know, if I were to sum that up, it, we have a choice is what it comes down to. We can choose to accept a defeatist mindset or we can choose, as you said, to, you know, ex I think the first step is accept the failure and, and not see it as a loss, see it as a learning. And it's feedback is like, now I know I was going to turn left now because I've learned the hard way. I'm going to turn right. But thank you for <laughs> bringing that to my attention. Like it's, it's not a bad thing. And I think failure has such um, a bad note to it. And, and I think a lot of leaders are afraid for their te teams to fail. But for me, failure is the willingness to try something. Uh huh. Failure is the desire to go and endure something, probably knowing you're not going to hit it. But if you hit it, then you know that you did what it took to get there. So like me playing football, right, Karen? I never expected to be an NFL athlete when I started playing football in high school. Never. I got one scholarship offer to college. That is it. That's it to Howard University, the Mecca. That's it. When I went to Howard, I'm like, oh, if I end up playing a year, two on the football team, great college experience, go and get a corporate job working on uh, for Merrill Lynch on Wall Street. That was my dream, right? Yeah, and that's interesting because, you know, I, most people you would think had a, a lifelong dream to be in the NFL. And, it, you know, what, what's the stats? I don't even know what they are, but I would say it's very difficult to get in. So it's like, it's like, you, it's like point. Oh, 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 five, three is something like that. You got a bet just being struck by lightning to go into the national football. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. And that's just, that's, that's real deal. <laughs> but, but think about that when things like that are stacked against you. I mean, it's almost foreshadowing now as that situation you were in then prepared you or gave you those coping tools. And maybe everyone's not going to use them to the extent that you had to. But what role do you feel that that played in you being able to rebuild yourself after, you know, you, you left the NFL? It sounded like your identity was attached to it because you had some downward spirals after that. So do you think that because the odds were so stacked against you, but you still prevailed, helped you become successful? Okay. So you learn to overcome adversity and hardship in that time frame and that's exactly what the NFL brought to me, taught me, and how to get where I am today as a business leader. Because again, I started this journey as a speaker in 2013 for two and a half years, right, Karen? Not one paid job. Finally got our first paid job in April 2016. And in the last almost seven years, we've worked for 47, excuse me, now 48. Fortune 500 clients, 48. We tried to do a podcast in 2017. It failed miserably. Came back 2020, met somebody, launched a podcast, did okay, had to part ways. We relaunched a new podcast, Get Authentic with Marcus Ogden, in June of this year. Six month date of our anniversary is tomorrow. We've been streamed in 56 countries. We're in the top one and a half percent most popular podcast worldwide. We have over 25 amazing sponsors and partners and collaborators. We've interviewed all types of great guests, right? And so now we're successful and we're fulfilled in that regard because I love, we love helping people succeed where we failed. So again, the thing is the NFL taught me a lot about how to deal with loss and how to overcome adversity in difficult times because you're going to have those problems. You're going to have those dark days as an entrepreneur. You're going to have those long days, those, man, I don't feel anything's going right. Man, what am I doing wrong? Man, where's this? Man, where's that? So I can tell you right now, Karen, that learning how to deal with the journey of football has really helped me to amplify how to handle the journey, the struggle, and embrace being fulfilled along the way, trying to be an entrepreneur. Because if you don't, if you have, I tell us all the time, if you have a weak or faint heart, do not get into being an entrepreneur. Don't even bother. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the word fulfilled there. And, and, um, 
you know, I, th I think that's huge. I think fulfillment is a big part because just in, when you think about the name of your, your podcast is Get Authentic. For me, in order to be authentic and show up as my authentic self and have my authentic voice, I have to know my purpose and I have to be fulfilled. So talk to us a little bit about how important is fulfillment. You just mentioned it, but also perhaps how much it's lacking in, in people. They don't even can consider it. It's just kind of like, I got to hit this number. And, and you have to ask yourself, well, <laughs> is there joy in what you're doing? Like, are you fulfilled in what you're doing? Are you just showing up as a, like a, you know, an empty suit? You know, we had a guy named Miyoko Taylor on our podcast recently interviewed him. This episode will come out in early January. I'm going to talk about a subject that people may want to talk about, may not want to talk about, but it's just the real person who I am, Twitch, right? Twitch, according to what you think or what most people think success is, Twitch had it. Beautiful wife, three lovely kids, was working with Ellen, people like Snoop Dogg, Mario Lopez, you know, Master P, you know, stars, all these people, right? Athletes, Michael Strain, all these people loved Twitch, absolutely loved them, right? But obviously, and unfortunately, he wasn't fulfilled, right, Karen, in his work, in his life, because you don't end your life with three children, a beautiful wife, friends, loved ones, unless, like Miyoko said, and people have said it to me also, he felt trapped. He felt no way out. And it's sad because here's such a young, well, what we thought vibrant, lively individual that obviously, not for just a little bit of time, right, Karen? For a lot of time, struggled. A lot of time was fighting demons, a lot of time was not happy with who he was. And I can relate because I've been there. I've had alcohol problems. I've had drug problems. I've had addiction problems. And I'm in therapy right now. Vulnerability, authenticity, that's me. Because again, business-wise, we're doing amazing. But as a preferred in my personal life, right, it's difficult at times because you have to balance work and family and stuff. And I'm not perfect. You know, sometimes I think I'm a machine. I'm a former athlete. Like, well, I can do, I can do, I can do it. But then I realize, like, well, no, I can't do everything like I used to. I need to slow down. So I get help, right? I, I have a therapist that I see every week. And I'm okay with that because here's the thing, right, Karen? I want to address the issues. So what happened to Twitch doesn't happen to me or someone else. Because again, Looking at from the outside, looking in at Twitch, right? He had success from what we saw. Money, fame, family, you know, notoriety, all those things, right? But something was obviously missing. So to answer your question, just because you have quote unquote success doesn't mean you're fulfilled if you don't appreciate what success you have worked to get to put yourself in a position, right, Karen, of saying, hey, I've done this, I deserve this, I wanna be here, I wanna be the best person I can be. But again, people don't understand, just because you have money, whatever the case may be, it doesn't mean you're fulfilled in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and that was uh, great, great points. And I think, you know, it's easy to judge from the outside looking in, whether it's Twitch or anybody, that you have it all. But there's, you know, that that iceberg, we see 10%. Nobody knows the 90% underneath what, what you're fighting. And so congratulations to you for your vulnerability and working with somebody, recognizing I don't have all the answers. But what I would say is most people stop there and they say, I don't have all the answers, but yet I'm not prepared to go out and get help. And so they just kind of sit in this place of, I guess, hoping for a different outcome. And unless you, I mean, that's inertia, right? Unless you have something else come and help you, you're not going to, you're not going to get a different outcome. No, and that's just, you know, I, what I love doing, right, Karen, I take notes of certain things because with our own podcast, I like to quote things I'm on and I that I enjoy from other, you know, other hosts and myself or just things that really help our audience. And you said it best. If you're not going to help yourself, then you're not going to be in a position to ever be fulfilled. It's just not possible. Like my therapist, right? He can't make me get up off the couch or out of a chair, get into my car, drive 
almost an hour to go see him, right? Because, Karen, when I went to get help in the summer, every therapist in the Raleigh-Durham area around me was booked solid for two months. So I had to go west side almost an hour to find a therapist, found him, like him. I've been with him since June. And he can't make me get into the car and go and do what I need to do, right? So what I hope people get from this segment right here is you have to be the driving force of your own ship. Great quote by Jack Del Rio. In life, if you want to have success, you have to be your own CEO. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. And, and I feel that's missing Marcus, because a lot of people lack the intrinsic motivation, you know, and what's going to drive them in terms of motivation. But also I feel that they lack that self-care and, and just pausing for a moment and taking stock of looking inward and saying like, how am I doing here? You know, so that I can get in front of these burnouts or these getting into funks. And, and we just kind of keep pushing forward. And I feel that that's the the hustle culture we're in. And, and so a lot of people say, you know, these young sales reps coming in and say, well, what's, you know, the top three things I should be doing. <laughs> and I don't give them the sexy answer, but it's like, uh, get some good sleep, look after your body <laughs> and feed yourself some good food. And it's the thing that's nothing to do with sales, but that allows you to show up as your best self to have conversations, to be others focused and really stay in front of these things. And so I think that that is, is, you know, foundational and fundamental as it is, that's what's missing these days. Oh, it's absolutely missing. Like me, I get up at five in the morning, every morning to go to the gym. I'm very conscious about what I eat. Do I drink? Yeah. You know, but I'm very like, you know, casual. I don't, I don't, I don't drink to excess or eat to excess anymore at all. But I will say to excess, I do work out cardio core, my body, you know, I like to have, you know, listen to a lot of podcasts, you know, some of our past guests, other podcasts, Tony Robbins, Bradley, other great ones, you know, to get inspiration, to move forward. I like to have my quiet time. I like to read things of that nature. And if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to have problems. I mean, I'm a guy, I get pedicures. I do <laughs> because I'm all about my feet being soft and not feeling like Eagle's claws. I mean, love my dad to death. God rest his soul, right? My father, unfortunately, passed away from two things I feel, right? Or well, three things. A medical condition called constrictive pericarditis. The valves around his heart tightened. Two, he died from lack of self-care. Hmm. He didn't get pedicures. He didn't take care of his teeth. He didn't take care of his dress or how he looked. He didn't take care of going for his fitness. And he just didn't do the things that I now as a 42 year old male realized that my dad didn't do these things. And that also contributed to his early passing at 57. And then third, he died of a broken heart. He was with the woman who I thought was sensational. I thought she was amazing. My parents divorced when I was eight. I was hoping he would get married to her. And he didn't because my dad never truly stopped loving my mother. But the whole thing is, is that I can see self-care being a huge part of success. Because my dad in his early life was a very successful, you know, uh, working uh, in the uh, in the finance space. Very successful. He was a manager, did great salary-wise. Talked about $150,000 back in the early 80s. I mean, the early 80s, but the $150,000 a year. So my dad had success. But like we talked about, my dad was never fulfilled. He loved being a dad. Love being a husband, but when my mom and him divorced, I think he lost that. And as his children got grown and didn't need him anymore, like they needed him in the beginning, I saw my dad literally wither away in front of my eyes for so long. Mm-hmm. So he just didn't have fulfillment in his life. So, and he stopped taking care of himself and all those things just combined to him, in my opinion, having an early passing. Mm-hmm. And I hear that a lot, especially after retirement, people lose that sense of purpose showing up every day. And, and unfortunately, a lot of even law enforcement, they die, they die very young because their body is so used to showing up and, and being held accountable. And then there's this freedom to do not, nothing. And they, they honestly die young. Very so much so. And it's sad because 
they never had a chance to really live outside of their work. And as a result of that, they never, in my opinion, got to know who they will, they really were outside the work environment. Or who they're capable of becoming. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very well said. And, and think about when you said self-care. Do you think a lot of people now perhaps are denying themselves self-care because they don't feel deserving of it? Absolutely. <laughs> That's not even a question. Yes, because they feel that doing self-care, you know, is going to, and again, I understand it's, it's a, there's a cost to it, right? I mean, you should be doing like everything like self-care, spending all types of money, but you need to budget some things in there for like a pedicure, getting a massage, you know, traveling, you know, whatever the case may be, right? I mean, wherever you, one of the things I love to do is play poker, right? I mean, it's a gamble, but I'll sit down with a hundred dollars, you know, two dollars for like four or five hours and play. That's my self care because I enjoy testing my mind and the thought, but I also enjoy just something different, right? I'm a big movie person, right? I'm a huge movie person, right? Love going to the movies and watching and engaging and all that type of stuff, right? That's, you know, my happy place, the gym. I mean, you know, nothing, these things aren't cheap. I mean, I'm paying $130 a month for the gym for me and my daughter, you know, but if I don't have that, then I don't take care of me. So never shortchange yourself in the short term, which can damage your long term effects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even to add to that, you know, self care doesn't, you could be a walk, it could be a hike, it could be, you know, meditation, it could be journaling, it doesn't even have to have a cost associated with it. I think it's just taking a break from the grind and the hustle. And sometimes we need to slow down in order to speed up. But people feel that the minute they're off LinkedIn or, uh, you know, not visible that, you know, their brand is going away. And it's like, <laughs> you need to take, what does my friends say? Um, you know, the fishermen need to mend their nets in times when times are down, they need to go and mend their nets and that's mend themselves so they can go back stronger. And I think that's still sometimes seen as a weakness. And it, in my opinion, it's, it's such the opposite. It's a sign of strength. So here's what I'll say to that. If you're early in your business and you don't really have any type of real foundational brand, I understand the hustle and grind because you got to get established. But once you are established, however long that takes, wherever that is, then you need to relax and recharge. And I'll be very honest with you, Karen, I mean, I'm an open book. I don't do that well. I, I don't do it well because my mind is I'm constantly racing. Like I was awarded a speaking job, you know, in Raleigh, which we're so excited about. Boom. What's next? How can I do this? How do I, because yeah. for me, I lost everything in 2013 because of an ego, mistakes, not doing what I was supposed to do. And I lost it all, right? I lost it all. So I am working this out in therapy around learning how to not have to always get something and then go some. I always say set a goal, or oh, sorry, set a target achieve a target, set a new target, right? That's what I do. But I got to do a better job of when I achieve the target, taking a minute of like self-care, relaxation, enjoyment, and then going on. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, oh yeah, I know this is awesome. And that's all that I do because the answer is no, because I'll mm -hmm. never, ever be a liar. So I really need to do that better. So if you're listening Take Karen's advice. I'm going to start trying to take it myself personally. Don't don't deny yourself the pleasures of life because, I mean, people always say this all the time. YOLO, you know, you only live once. If you believe in more than that, that's cool. That's your thing. No problem. But from what I've been taught and believe, YOLO, right? So when I make, meet my maker, I don't ever want to feel that I didn't do things that I enjoy. So I'm working on that self-care in myself, Karen. So that was a really excellent point around, you know, don't deny yourself and set time in your schedule for that. Because mm -hmm. if you don't, then the days go by very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and I, I, I do that intentionally because it, my days will go. So I block time out for myself because I know I show up as a better wife, as a better mom, <laughs> as a better consultant. And so I see the results. Um, but I think it's important to celebrate. I know you said set a target, achieve it. But before we move on, we have to celebrate it. And I think, well, you tell me, you know, how 
what role does gratitude play for you now, knowing where you've come from, hitting rock bottom, rebuilding, and just being very mindful and present of what you have? Like how how important or, or how often do you express gratitude? Oh, I express gratitude daily. I mean, sometimes I can't believe all the success we're having business-wise with our podcast to all these country stream to all these amazing sponsors to people paying us now to go and share our story and clients that we're able to serve and people like you, you know, requesting us to be on your podcast. I remember back in 2000, like, you know, 13, 14, 15, even 16, right? I would call people, even when I got my first paid job, it wasn't consistent, right? I would call people, hang up, but they would never answer. I would try to get on podcasts, no response, nothing. I spent my days, Karen, trying to work on a brand, coaching kids football. If I wasn't coaching, I was in the house watching like Match Game 77 on the Game Show Network or Family Feud with like Richard Dawes from the 70s, right? Because <laughs> I had nothing to do, right? I had nothing to do. So today, literally, that TV doesn't turn on. Like until like maybe nighttime, I might watch some mindless horror movie or some stupid action movie just to kind of keep myself, you know, numb and like just relax. But during the day, I haven't cut the TV on during the day, probably in like four or five years because we're just that busy, you know, which is great. But like you said, gratitude plays everything in what we do because if we're not grateful for what we have, then you don't deserve anything because, and that's why Karen, I lost everything because I wasn't grateful for what I had and I wasn't grateful for the team that we had built. And as a result of that, I lost everything. And I'd start over from completely rock bottom. Mm -hmm. So if there's people listening, Marcus, and they perhaps aren't starting from rock bottom, but they're picking themselves up, maybe they're changing careers or getting a new job what you've just shared is, you know, gratitude would be one major pillar that they should focus on. Do you have a few other things that people could just really anchor to say, yes, this is going to help me even maybe get up in the morning and just, you know, a lot of people are waiting for the mindset to come. And in my opinion is the action comes first and the mindset will come after. So is there two or three other things apart from gratitude that, that you could share that they could do? Three things that people need to do. Number one is be consistent. Okay. That means Literally, do what you need to do. Create a routine. Be consistent. Do I like waking up at 5 30 in the morning to go to the gym? Not really. Not at all. Do I like looking like I actually am not a former athlete that's like let himself go and has, you know, dad bod and all that stuff? I, yeah, I am. Right? I am. So, do I like the whole thing I have to do to get what I want? No, but that's consistency. Discipline, that's literally telling yourself, yep, I'm going to do what I have to do. No excuses, no BS. I have a saying, no excuses, just results. Mm -hmm. No excuses, right? And then third, just put out and have positivity and display positive actions. People will follow positive actions all day, every day. Mm -hmm. What they won't follow is negativity, doubt, and anxiety and stress, which is exactly why when I lost Caden, my old construction company, that's how I live my life every single day. Every single day. So I hope people take from this, just learn how to be grateful, but also learn how to be consistent be disciplined and just be positive in everything you do. Smile, be happy. Don't bring in negativity, self-doubt, loathing, jealousy. Live by what we call, or what I learned this in a, in a class I took, be all about the character ethics. Things like honesty, truth, loyalty, you know, servitude, you know, uh, you know being a servant, you know, servitude, you know, all these things, mm -hmm. right? Character. Don't live on the personality ethics side, rage, wrath, lust, envy, jealousy, you know, deceit. Mm -hmm. Don't live there because if you live on the personality side, 
you'll never truly get to your optimal level of success. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, I would agree with that. And it sounds like that's the, the surface. Whereas when you get depth, you know, that's where you drive results. And so I would just say, you know, this is if sales leaders are listening to this, like that's how, how can they adopt this for their team? How can they express gratitude for their team that they're there every day for the feedback, what they're sharing, the collaboration, how can they be consistent with their messages? Um, how can they have their own discipline and, and positivity? You mentioned chi before, like for me, I'm all about energy and I, and I just feel the gravitational pull. I can detect negative energy very quickly and I avoid it at all costs. I just don't go near those people because I, they're, they're trying to suck it away from me. And I just, I recognize that I, you know, block my chakras and I move on. Yeah, a good friend of mine named J.J. Bird who played in the NFL for a few years, many years with uh, the Chiefs and um, with uh, the Falcons. He wrote a book, and in his book, I think the title of his book, he wrote a book saying that they are what he called vampire suckers. Mm -hmm. They would just suck your energy out and dry. And he's he's 100% right. Mm -hmm. And in life, you know, Warren Buffett said it best. No, ma no matter how much money I make, I can never buy time. So if you're wasting time with the wrong people, you're, it's, it's never going to get any better. It's going to always, you're going to always be in that circle, 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 chase, chase, chase mode and never, in my opinion, get ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vampire suckers is so important. I think it's important to realize, you know, the people around you, but also maybe times even within yourself, like what, when do you feel this? Like be, be aligned to your energy. Like when are you high energy um, and really align your daily activities to those points. Like I'm a morning person. I'm a 5.30 a.m. girl, like you're 5, 5 a.m. And so that's when I do my creative tasks, right? So even as sales leaders, how can you align the motivation, the energy of your team? Because not everyone's going to be morning people. So can you split the task so that the, the 2 p.m. guy is getting his cold calling sheet or whatever he's doing at 2 p.m. to really ensure that we're aligning with the energy to get the optimal results that we're looking for. Correct. And so as a leader, you have to master four key areas, innovation or inventing, sense-making, visioning, and relating. You have to always be an innovative type of individual that's all about creating a space where your team feels free to try new things and be creative and be innovative and take calculated risk. Mm -hmm. Sense making, the art of turning difficult and or arduous information into easily applicable action steps. Third, visioning. It's all about creating a vision, personal and or professional, where people see the blueprint they see the key in the blueprint and they know how to follow it and execute it and relating. No one is going to follow a leader that they don't like. I had dinner with my publicist last night in Philly. I had not met her until last night. She had been working for us since February and now she's like family. I'll tell her I love her. She's amazing. She's part of our team. Same thing I tell like my manager, I love her and our website guy, I love him and Albert, love him and all of our team, right? You know, that, that, that core team, right? And Ben had never, ever met me until last night. And Ben went through some hard times personally, and so did I. And I never, ever made her feel that she couldn't come to me. I never made her feel that if she missed the deadline, I'm going to slap you on the wrist and shame on you, man. Never, never. And when we talked then, I said, Marcus, what I love about you, working with you, because she's moving on to another job. She'll be back. She's taking an amazing job, which I'm so happy for her to do. He said, Marcus, the reason that I love you as a friend and a person and that, I, that leads me and I work with is because you never judged me. You never, ever made me feel that hard times, difficult times, missing deadlines, you know, you know, flustered, fried, all these things, right? You never, ever made me feel why I couldn't come to you and talk about it. Other clients did, and I work for them, but now that I'm done, whenever I come back to do extra consulting work, I'm not going to work with them, only you and a couple other people. But I really felt and related 
that you knew what I was going through and you were empathetic and were compassionate the entire time. Mm -hmm. And here we are now, you know, almost a year. Thanks, you know, whenever she comes back, we'll be here. Mm -hmm. I'm actually in Philly meeting with the new social media marketing team that's going to be taking over while she's gone. We're going to use the podcast for PR. Then when she comes back, she'll do PR and the other couple will probably stay on. We'll add more people. Mm -hmm. Everybody's happy. And were you surprised to hear that feedback, Marcus? No, because I know now the difference how to run a company and how to make it thrive versus how to run a company and how to make it go to its demise. Because mm -hmm. with Caden, we had success and my, excuse my language, my dumb ass ran it straight into the ground. Mm -hmm. Arrogance, ego, driving, get this done, get that done. No excuses, like just da 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 right? For me as a person, as a man, no excuses. Business, no excuses, but as long as you have something going on and you're telling me about it, we can work around it. Mm -hmm. We can work through it, right? And that's where a leader, you have to say, okay, are they BSing me or they actually want to have a problem? Have a problem, you got to work around it. Mm -hmm. If it's BS, you got to sense it, say, you know what? It's not going to work for me. You need to fix it, so we got to go, we got to move on. And Ben showed me enough of how she did work at a high level when she was going through a hard time. I never questioned her. I never thought it was BS. And I was right there by her like the rest of the team was. Mm -hmm. Because that is what leadership's all about. It's about, great quote by General Dwight D. Eisenhower, leadership is the art of getting people to do what you want done because they want to do it. Oh, I love that. Absolutely. And th I think that's so where, where leaders fall is because they're telling what they want to be done. And the other person does There's no alignment on just, as you said, on the vision. And it's, you know, the biggest thing I see is leaders are trying to drive results still through product. And it's like, now you have to drive results through people and it's a completely different skill set. So when you were just saying, you know, it sounds like you, you know, you have a lot of humility, you, you held space for people and you're getting that recognition back. And it also sounds like you are operating from heart more than head. And that's what's allowing your business to thrive now. Whereas in the past you, you were that ego driven, just very reactive in the head and head. But when you can feel things, you can feel people, you can connect with them. And you're seeing that example right now with your, your marketing person who's taking a lead, but she's coming back. Right. And not just that she does PR marketing. I mean, she fixed so much with our brand, just so much. And what happened? She introduced us to the new social media marketing team. That's why I'm back in Philly because Ben introduced me to her colleague, Paige, and I met with them today. Awesome. She's got a full team. Love it. They're going to do a full audit. They start in January. Bam. There we go. Right. And we're going to have a full strategy on how to maximize social. And Ben never really was that her wheelhouse. She did it. But her wheelhouse was always PR, branding, you know, getting out, you know, all this opportunity, right? That was her wheelhouse. Now, when she comes back, she can stay in her wheelhouse and then Paige and her team stay with social media. That way, she's not what? Feeling overworked. Feeling what? Burnt out. And that's what it's all about, right? Great leaders, they don't show people where to go. They don't tell them where to go. They take them where they need to go. Mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about that's good begets good that's uh that's good that's that's karma coming back to you so well we've talked about a lot of things really the resilience the mindset the belief of self um and really then when you you turn it you turn it into actionable takeaways you know consistency discipline and um and positivity and so if people want to learn more about you uh marcus where apart from listening to your podcast, get authentic with Marcus and we'll Ogden and we'll put that in the show notes. What's the best way for them to do that? They can shoot us an email, Marcus, M A R Q U E S at Marcus Ogden.com. Connect with us, send us a note, send us something, email, and we love to, you know, touch base with you. We're all about people. We're all about connectivity and we're all about what? creating a space where you feel free to express yourself and you know without hesitation that you'll never be judged.
Oh, I love that. That's such um, that's great advice. Well, listen, I want to thank you for your time and sharing your story. I know that a lot of people that are feeling down, hopefully um, now they have a path forward and they can get out of their mind and, and start, you know, creating game changing results to move forward. So thank you so much, Marcus. Thanks for having me on, Karen. I appreciate it. Okay. My pleasure. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.